Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Strong in the Saddle. I'm your host, Katrina. And today we are talking about Calgary Stampede. So for those of you who don't follow me on social media or watch my YouTube videos, I did go to the Calgary Stampede this past weekend. I went to day two of Calgary Stampede. The last time I was at Stampede, as far as I can recall, was 10 years ago. I've been several times before. I've gone to the rodeo, the chuck wagons, grandstand show. Uh, I saw George Strait there one year. And so for those of you who don't know, Calgary Stampede is... A, the self-proclaimed greatest outdoor show on earth. It started a hundred years ago and it was back then I believe it was just the rodeo and it's just kind of grown into the behemoth that it is now ever since then. So in addition to the rodeo, yeah, as I said, they have chuck wagon races and it's over the span of 10 days. They have a huge, huge grandstand show, a massive midway with all sorts of rides and basically any kind of carnival food that you could dream up. Um, They have other Western events like roping, team penning, cutting. They have stock dog shows, art fairs, um, yeah, concerts constantly with yeah like big big name headliners like George Strait in the past and it's 10 days of just craziness <laughs> and uh i i touched on this a little bit in my youtube video about stampede i uh i love calgary stampede and hate calgary stampede and like i say hate with a bit of hesitancy um I don't know I, it's kind of more lack of a better word I suppose um but I thought I would just kind of go into a bit more detail on in all of that on today's episode because yes I did touch on it in my YouTube video but I didn't really go into a ton of detail so we're gonna do that today so we'll start with the good side of Stampede so the good is Stampede, I would say, um, if we look specifically at the rodeo itself. So for each of, and I'll just kind of explain how the format of the rodeo is set up. So they have two pools of contestants. They have Pool A and Pool B. Pool A will run every day for four days in a row. And then Pool B will run every day for four days in a row. Then on day nine... They have a wild card Saturday. What is it called? Something like that. Yeah, like their wild card where anyone who didn't qualify for showdown Sunday through the regular pool events goes to the wild card. And if you meet the qualification there, then you go to showdown Sunday. So for the regular days one through eight, first place in each event wins $7,000. And they pay out four spots, so one through four. And then on Showdown Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, the winner of each event on Showdown Sunday wins $100,000 plus a very, very nice bronze statue. I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure they still pay out hundred grand, but... Don't quote me on that. So that's a lot of money on the line. And for people who are trying to make a living rodeoing, that money is, it makes a huge difference. And I'm very, very happy to see events like the Calgary Stampede paying out larger sums like that. Rodeo is very unique in that it's, a far cry from the money generated in other sports like say the NFL or the NHL any of those more any of those other professional sports leagues the PRCA and the WPRA 
it's a far cry from those. So to see rodeos paying bigger money like that is awesome. So that's definitely a plus for Calgary Stampede. Another reason I really, really love the Stampede is the fact that it does highlight Western culture. You know, everyone becomes aware of rodeo and the cowboy and all of that sort of a thing. Um, I feel like people in the Western industry, they, they're they not, for the most part, they're not showboaty people. And it takes events like the Calgary Stampede to like really showcase how great the Western lifestyle is. So I definitely appreciate that as well. And of course, Calgary Stampede is phenomenal for the city of Calgary itself. I can only imagine how much additional revenue gets brought in for the city of Calgary, for any like Western related businesses that are in or around Calgary or that come to Calgary, you know, with a booth or what have you. Lamley's Western Wear is, I think, the only Western Wear uh, retailer on the grounds during Stampede. Again, don't quote me on that, but I can only imagine how many cowboy hats and western shirts and cowboy boots they sell during those 10 days. Like I can only imagine. And that's fantastic. Like if we can help businesses in the western industry, then by all means. So those are definitely all some pluses when it comes to the Calgary Stampede. There's, so those are some really great things. Um, I guess the final thing I would say on the plus side is I just love, so the rodeo is invitational and it, it's a fantastic rodeo. Like it, whether you are a very knowledgeable um, viewer, you you a knowledgeable spectator when it comes to rodeo or you're you've never been to a rodeo before everyone can enjoy the rodeo the contestants are world champions past world champions like top 15 in the world fantastic athletes and the bucking stock calgary stampede has what's called their born to buck program where they are breeding bucking horses and bulls specifically for rodeo and they've they are refining every single year those bloodlines to create phenomenal athletes like those horses and those bulls are athletes and when you pair that the the livestock with the amazing human competitors it's an incredible rodeo an incredible show so all of that those are all good things that come out of Calgary Stampede. But the reason I really wanted to talk about this today is not because of all the good things Calgary Stampede, which we we're, we won't downplay that, but I'm much more concerned about the issues that I have with Calgary Stampede. And one of the first ones on the list is we'll just get some of the sillier ones out of the way. So when we were walking around the fairgrounds, it was very apparent that there was a certain look that it seemed like everyone had had, like everyone, all the females or a large majority of the females had like a group meeting and everyone decided to dress basically the same. And it was not great. Um, I'll, inappropriate I would say there was a lot of people who are dressed very very inappropriately at Calgary Stampede and for an event that's supposed to be family friendly it was disappointing to see and I mean it's not like the, the Calgary Stampede itself can enforce a dress code but like to a certain extent I suppose they can but people are going to wear what they're going to wear and I guess certain things are in style when I was at Stampede 10 years ago, I really don't think people dressed that inappropriately. There might have been the odd person here or there, but it was very, very apparent this year. And it was, 
in a lot of cases actually quite disgusting and not something that I wanted to look at all day. So that's one thing. Another thing coming from an introvert over here is just the insane crowds. So on day one of this year's stampede, they did make a new attendance record, which was well over 100,000 people going through their turnstiles. And I'm sure they probably broke an attendance record on day two as well. It was beautiful outside and it was a Saturday. So you can only imagine how many people were on those grounds. And I will just say on one hand, it was awesome in the fact that it felt like COVID had never been a thing, which was fantastic. But it's also like, it is overwhelming when there's that many people. So that's another thing. Whereas, you know, if you go to like up Highway 2 to Pinocchio Stampede, yes, it's busy, but it's not like that. You can still see the same talent as far as the rodeo goes without having to deal with the insane crowds of Calgary Stampede. So that's another thing. One thing that has always plagued Calgary Stampede is animal rights activists. So uh, I mean, I'm probably preaching to the choir here. I'm sure many of you who are listening are supportive of rodeo, but I'm sure you can understand that rodeo can be controversial. And because the Calgary Stampede has such a large, loud platform, they do experience a lot of scrutiny from animal rights activist groups and protesters and that sort of a thing. When we were watching the rodeo, um, we were in the grandstand and if you looked beyond the rodeo arena across the river valley, there was a big hill and there was a fence and there was a bunch of protesters over there and they were holding up a very large banner that said, rodeo kills. Now, I'm not going to like... I am. I'm going to make the assumption that a lot of people holding up that banner had never attended a rodeo in their life, have never met someone who competes in rodeo, and really do not have a full picture of what rodeo is. They've maybe heard some over-exaggerated things on the news or online or what have you, and have made some some assumptions about what rodeo is, what rodeo does, all those sorts of a thing, all those sorts of things. And it's frustrating. Um, The Calgary Stampede, the organizers have on many, many occasions tried to appease those activists. They've brought in different rules for the truck wagon races, but, and one one spot that it was very apparent at the rodeo when I was there was in the calf roping. So they have in, added in some additional rules when it comes to the calf roping about like pulling your slack and things like that. But it made for bad spectating. And there was a couple of occasions where calf ropers got no times and I don't know why. And I'm an an experienced spectator when it comes to rodeo. Like, I know what's going on. And I could not tell you why they got disqualified. I know it has something to do with either jerking the calf or something. But it seemed like, like, I asked the question, like, okay, why did this guy get in no time and that guy didn't? It did not make sense. And I don't know. I really think adding in additional rules like that, to a certain extent, yes, it is good because, okay, we're helping protect animals and all that sort of a thing. But you also have to remember that even if you do bring those rules in, you're never going to appease those protesters. At the end of the day, all they want is for the rodeo to be canceled completely. They do not want rodeo to happen. And so you can add a million different rules to the event and they're still going to complain. And so if you're going to start adding in rules that aren't going to make any 
make the protesters feel any better and it's just going to take away from the sport of rodeo i really don't think those rules should be added in right because it's it's not making anyone any happier and it might be even you know yeah just reducing the value of the experience that you're generating which i don't think is great so there's that like yeah it rodeo is controversial i know it is anything when you're dealing with animals there's always going to be people with an opinion one thing that i wish calgary stampede would do a better job of is educating people about rodeo i really don't think they do a good job of that the girl sitting beside me in the stands she was literally sitting there googling on her phone bucking horse rules so like she literally has no idea what's going on so she's googling this she was on wikipedia yes i was snooping on her phone as she was doing that and then so she would read something and then like communicate to her friends how the rules work like these a huge swath of the people that attend the rodeo don't know what's going on and i really think Calgary Stampede has a responsibility to educate the people that are coming to see the rodeo. Like we don't need to sit down and have a lecture about everything, but I do think some education about how each event works, how the animals are treated phenomenally. I really think Calgary Stampede needs to somehow incorporate that education piece into their performances so that maybe people have a more informed view of what is going on and why rodeo is something that is okay that's not abusive yeah education that's a huge piece and that actually ties into another huge issue that i have with calgary stampede and this might be this is my biggest beef with calgary stampede so When you go to Stampede, and you don't even have to be at the grounds, like Calgary as a whole transforms during Stampede. Whether you are a a downtown high-end lawyer or a checkout girl at the grocery store, everyone is participating in Stampede in some way, shape, or form. They might have a cowboy hat on, they might wear their plaid shirt, they might wear a pair of cowboy boots, something. Everyone is, like, the majority of people for that week will dress a little ranchy. My problem is that people don't understand what that means, and I'm specifically referring to the cowboy hat. The cowboy hat, when you see someone wearing a cowboy hat, and we'll just say, like, outside of stampede if you see a guy wearing a cowboy hat you immediately know some things about him you think okay he probably does not live in town he probably has a horse or maybe some cows he might drive a pickup truck and he probably works outside the cowboy hat is a symbol it symbolizes a certain person a certain lifestyle It symbolizes a certain work ethic, certain values, a code, a creed, whatever word you want to use. It is a huge symbol that I think a lot of people don't even recognize at all. They are completely unaware of what the cowboy hat represents. And I'd be willing to bet that a large majority of people who put on a cowboy hat during Calgary Stampede do not actually support or appreciate what is on their head and what that is symbolizing. And they might actually, outside of Stampede, like not support the Western lifestyle and might actually be working against it. And like some of you might be saying, okay, Katrina, calm down. It is just a cowboy hat. But in my mind, it is not just a cowboy hat. Like it literally represents something that I am very passionate about. And that's the cowboy and the Western way of life. And if people who 
are putting down the Western industry outside of Stampede, are adorning their heads with a cowboy hat during the 10 days of Stampede. I have a problem with that. Like, it it's something that means a lot to me. And the Western industry, the Western lifestyle is very, very important to me. It's something that I've grown up with my entire life. My family has made a living through the Western industry. I would not be here because of it. I likely wouldn't have a job because of it. It's it, it's very, very important. And I think there's this huge contradiction when city people put one on their heads. Even if it's one of those stupid, ridiculous looking straw hats that they buy at Stampede. It, it still means something. And I really wish people would better understand the significance of what they're doing when they put a cowboy hat on. And again, this goes back, as I was saying, with the animal rights activists and education. I really think that Stampede, again, having the platform that it does, needs to educate people on what it means to be a cowboy, what it represents, why it's important, what the Western way of life is all about and why it needs to be respected. I think like if you add in combination with how inappropriate dressed a lot of women were at Calgary Stampede when I was there on Saturday, when you combine that with a complete disregard and lack of information or having misinformation about the Western way of lifestyle, like I think it's doing a great disservice to the cowboy and the Western way of life. I don't think that it's getting the respect that it deserves. <laughs> and yeah, you you might think I'm being a little bit over the top or just like oversensitive maybe, but people are very, very harsh when it comes to the Western way of life. And like, even if they're not animal rights activists, even if they're just making fun of the Western industry, maybe how we dress or how we talk, I think it deserves a significant more respect than it currently gets. And I think that at Stampede, it's put on full display the lack of respect that the general population has for people like me, my family, and the sorts of people that are similar and that live and breathe the Western way of life. I I don't know what it is and why people do not respect the cowboy, the rancher, the farmer more. But I I really do believe with my whole heart that Calgary Stampede actually, even though they do try to promote Western heritage, I think if you're combining it with trying to appease activists and whatever else, you're actually doing the complete opposite. You're doing a disservice to the Western industry. So I feel like that got really heavy. (laughs) I've been thinking for a couple of days about what I wanted to say in this podcast because I do have very strong feelings, as you can see and tell from this episode, about Calgary Stampede. There is some good things, but there's also a lot of things that need to be improved upon. And the the large piece is education. And yeah, just explaining to people why rodeo does not kill Like, yes, it is an extreme sport and things happen, but that can happen in any sport that is as extreme as rodeo. And yeah, like I said, Calgary Stampede has a megaphone these first couple of weeks in July. There is no reason that they cannot be more outspoken about why rodeo is amazing and why it's something that people should be excited about, why people should support. There's no reason why Stampede cannot emphasize the need for respect when it comes to the cowboy way of life. Calgary Stampede is fully capable of doing all of those things and they they really should be. They're dropping the ball right now as far as I'm concerned. So 
that was my Stampede adventure for 2023. I will not be going back to Calgary Stampede for a very, very long time, if ever. I, yeah, it's just chaos. <laughs> I would much rather go to Pinocchio Stampede. Um, Benalto isn't that far from here, and a lot of very talented people ride there because it's close. Um, yeah, I'd rather stick to those, support the more small town rodeos where things are a bit more in line with what I support and with what I value. So that's kind of it. I would be really interested to hear your thoughts on all of this. So if you have any thoughts, please be sure to leave a comment, send me a DM. I'm everywhere at Strong in the Saddle. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm on all of the major pa pla podcast platforms, and I'm also on YouTube, and I spend a lot of time on Instagram, so you can find me there. And until next time, remember, it's always a good day to ride. <laughs>